Hello everyone, Dr. Sri Raj here. How are you doing? This video is made to answer an FAQ. As a consultant doctor, I used to get frequently repeated questions from my patients and online enquiries. It's really hard to answer them all individually, so I thought to make a video series one after other based on the frequently asked questions. The link to the FAQ playlist is given under the description of this video, so stay subscribed and stay tuned. I get a ton of questions asking whether all Ayurvedic medicines are safe or do they contain metals and minerals? Are there any side effects for the Ayurvedic medicines? Will this affect my kidneys and liver, etc. Well, this video is the answer for all. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Ayurveda, arguably the oldest system of medicine, is well known for its herbal medications which have absolutely no side effects. But still, in many parts of the world, especially in the European countries, many Ayurvedic medicines are not approved. It's very tough to get an import license or a manufacturing license though, to bring certain Ayurvedic products there. It's quite funny that in a country where cannabis or ganja is approved, a very mild herb like Shatavari is banned. But what could be the reason? The reason number one is sheer ignorance about this science, I mean about Ayurveda. Number two is the stringent quality controls in their food and drug administration. Number three is the practical difficulty of standardization of Ayurvedic medicines, manufacturing and pharmacology. Number four is obviously the traces of metals and minerals and other toxins itself in a very few Ayurvedic medicines. Yes, it's true that some of the Ayurvedic formulations do contain metals, mineral and certain other substances which are considered to be toxic in the present world. Although most of the Ayurvedic preparations are completely safe and herbal in origin, some of the very few Ayurvedic preparations do contain metal, minerals and uh, toxins like uh, gold, silver, copper, tin, lead, zinc, iron, arsenic, sulfur and even mercury as ingredients. I'm not talking about the naturally found metal traces in plant ingredients, but the metals and minerals itself which are added as such after a series of purification methods. Now the question is, are they really toxic or poisonous? It's, it's, it's really a vast topic to talk about, but let me just brief it. Ayurveda says there is nothing in this world that cannot be used as a medicine. Jagatyeva nakinjit aushadam. Anything is a medicine if used in the right way at the right time. Even the urine or fecal matter can be used as a medicine. I personally know certain people who had fecal transplantation that do orally from the United States of America, which is a treatment in the modern medicine for leaky gut. Toxins or poisons have always been a part of medical science. Not just Ayurveda, even the modern science uses many metals and minerals that Ayurveda had used thousands of years back. Modern medicine uses like uh, zinc, iron, calcium, phosphorus, sodium, magnesium, etc. in their medications, but only after a refined way of processing, which is considered to be sophisticated at the moment. The modern medicine uses many toxins that we had used in the past. Before the actual legal ban, some of the Ayurvedic medicines used to have cannabis or marijuana and opium. Both of these are now recognized as medications. All opioids like morphine, codeine, etc. are from the opium plant, the same old dirty narcotic. All the steroids are super toxic. If not toxic, why they create a lot of adverse effects? Even paracetamol is hepatotoxic if taken in large doses. In fact, anything that acts quickly in your body has got a possibility of having toxic property. We call that property of quick action and absorption of any substance in the body as Vyavai and Fikashi. That's why the Ayurvedic herbal preparations are relatively slowly acting. If the preparation is herbal, there is no issues of overdose in most cases since it only acts like a food. Anything that gives you a real quick effect may have the risk of having side effects too. The metals and mineral preparations of Ayurveda is really quick acting. Well, let's take also another example of a common modern medicine named as warfarin. It was initially discovered in a lab as a potent rat poison to kill the rodents. Then they found out that the rats were mostly killed by internal bleeding. Then they had uh, human trials and now it's been used as a very effective anticoagulant to make the blood 
much thinner in conditions like arterial fibrillation, deep vein thrombosis, etc., which can reduce the risk of uh, stroke, heart attack, and other serious conditions. The funniest fact is that it's still used as a rat poison as well in the market. Ayurveda is quite old, dates back to 5,000 or 6,000 years back. Throughout its time, since the inception, the science has been modified in each centuries by each generation. I believe that the modern medicine is just a modified and modernized continuation of what the older systems of medicines have taught us. During the Bronze Age and Iron Age, there were so many researches happening in India on metals and minerals. Some were even trying to convert lower metals like iron into gold. Of course, they must have miserably failed, but they found out that many of the metals and minerals can be used in medical practice. Although they seem to be obsolete at the moment, it was really appreciable and very effective in those times while there were no super speciality hospitals or not even any other medical science available as an alternative option. For example, can you imagine that the metal iron was used in multiple Ayurvedic formulations to treat anemia since 3000 years back itself? And the modern science just found out that iron is a part of hemoglobin only by 1840 after a scientist found out that the blood of the earthworm was crystallized like iron. He was ridiculed for years for his hasty conclusions and then after long years only they realized that he was right. So the moral is, the facts though seem to be ridiculous now may be later found as fantastic piece of information. Ayurveda has got a separate branch itself to study about the metals and minerals in detail called as Rasha Shastra and it has another branch to study about toxicology named as Agatha Tandra. All these branches studies in detail about the ores, purification and processing of each metals and minerals in depth. There are even postgraduate courses in these specialities. So to sum up, I mean to state that poison is not something that should be completely ignored. It may be effectively used at times when it's really necessary in emergencies. But before concluding this video, I would like to share my own opinion about the preparations that contains metals and minerals. Well, this is my unbiased personal opinion and other doctors and even my colleagues or teachers may have a difference of opinion. I don't personally use any medication that contains uh, heavy metals or toxic substances, even if they are safe to use. The reasons are, number one, it's really hard to make people understand about the good side of those contents, if any. Then mercury is one of the major components of such medicines. If you Google the health benefits of mercury, you can hardly find any other than the high risk factors. So it is hard to justify ourselves and to convince others. Number three, the manufacturing process of metallic medicines are quite a hectic task as per the text. It is not practical to produce them exactly the same way in the labs or factories as the classical textual references are given. And uh, fortunately, there are thousands and thousands of herbal preparations available which are relatively slowly acting but makes no harm. So I prefer a slower yet safer cure. Of course, I admit that those medications are really quick effective and quick acting. But I don't want to risk anyone's health for a quick benefit or for quick popularity. Again, the disclaimer goes, it is just my personal opinion. The Food and Drug Administration of India has approved most of those medications. Thousands and thousands of doctors, including my friends, or colleagues, seniors, etc. are practicing with them in the right way and are quite successful in their practice. But I personally believe it's their responsibility to prove the world about the safety of those medications so that a great science like Ayurveda will not get blacklisted in the modern world. I hope I've cleared your confusions about the presence of metals and minerals in some of the Ayurvedic medications. Hope my video was useful. Keep subscribed and uh, spread the information by sharing this video. This is Dr. Sriraj signing off. See you soon with another one. Stay safe. Bye.